okay so once we discuss thermodynamics okay overall concept summary so to benefit uh, mainly for jl students and right anyhow that is useful for all competitive exams okay present purpose is for jl students right <coughs> so thermodynamics what is the right what is the one of the important applications of thermodynamics and thermodynamics gives information about what feasibility of a process thermodynamics gives information about feasibility so that feasibility we can uh, verify by using enthalpy internal energy entropy gibbs free energy okay Helmholtz free energy, chemical potential, etc. So by using all these variables, we can verify feasibility of a process, whether a given process can takes place or cannot takes place. Okay, and uh, it also gives what efficiency of heat engines. Thermodynamics gives what efficiency of heat engines. In heat engine, which energy converted to which energy? heat energy converted to work energy okay next okay when a system comes to equilibrium what is the condition for equilibrium what is the condition for equilibrium that also we'll discuss by using thermodynamics with respect to h u s g a and u mu we can explain we can explain when a system comes to equilibrium okay but the limitation is it is applicable to which systems and it is applicable to macroscopic systems or microscopic systems macroscopic systems only system consisting of large number of particles it is applicable to system consisting of large number of particles only and system what is system and the part of the universe which is under our observation that is called system other than system is called surrounding so system plus surroundings is called universe system plus surroundings is called universe how many types of systems we have three types of systems open system closed system isolated system okay open system in the case of open system both heat right both heat and matter exchange takes place heat exchange takes place and matter exchange takes place between system and surroundings that is called open system example boiling of water in open vessel boiling of water in open vessel heat enters from surroundings and water evaporates into surroundings right closed system and only heat exchange takes place but no matter exchange okay for example boiling of water in closed vessel boiling of water in closed vessel isolated system neither exchange of heat nor matter between system and surroundings that is called isolated system here we may take insulated vessel the vessel doesn't allow flow of heat through it the example is water or hot water present in ideal thermos flask hot water present in ideal thermos flask ideal thermos flask means no exchange of heat between system and surroundings so this is the isolated system okay next one we discussed thermodynamic properties how many types of thermodynamic properties we have only extensive and intensive properties what are extensive properties and that depends on number of moles that depends on number of moles or amount of substance if a thermodynamic property depends on amount of substance or number of moles that is called extensive property for example all these what about h u s g a all these depends on number of moles of the substance so they are said to be extensive property what about heat capacity and extensive property extensive property <coughs> okay uh, next force area volume mass all these are also extensive properties force area volume mass length okay all these are 
extensive properties. Next, what about intensive properties? And if a property not depends on amount of the substance or number of moles of the substance, that is called intensive property. What about chemical potential? Intensive property that is nothing but Gibbs free energy for how many moles only? One mole. That is the change in Gibbs free energy for one mole. If you express a property for one mole or per 1 gram per unit area per unit volume that is called as intensive property. For example, pressure, pressure is nothing but force per unit area. So therefore, intensive property. Density, mass per unit volume. Okay, if you express a property for unit area, unit volume, unit amount, unit weight, okay, unit number of moles that is said to be what? Intensive property. Okay. Next to specific heat capacity, molar heat capacity, Cp, Cv, molar heat capacity at constant pressure, molar heat capacity at constant volume. Okay. For example, if you take molar enthalpy, that is what? Intensive, we are taking for one mole, molar entropy, we are taking for one mole. So if you express all these properties again for one mole, they are said to be what? Intensive properties. Concentration. What about concentration also? Intensive. Number of moles per unit volume. Number of moles present in 1 litre of solution. Number of moles per unit volume. So that is also intensive. Okay. Concentration is equal to number of moles by volume in litres. Number of moles is extensive property or intensive property? Extensive property. Volume, extensive property. The ratio of two extensive properties is intensive property. Like this also we can verify. The ratio of two extensive properties is intensive property. What about bo what about boiling point, melting point and e? boiling point, melting point are intensive property. They do not depend on amount of the substance. Whatever may be the amount of water, it boils at 100 degree centigrade only. Okay. So, they do not depend on amount of the substance. Some of the properties of solvent like refractive index, viscosity, surface tension, refractive index, viscosity, surface tension. All those depends on nature of solvent only, not on amount of solvent. All those are also said to be what? Intensive properties, right? And extensive properties are said to be additive. Extensive properties are said to be additive. This is the concept of extensive and intensive properties. Next one, path function and state function. What about path function? If change in property, some example, for example, I am taking a property X. If change in property depends on path followed, depends on path followed, not depends on states, initial and final state. Okay, not depends on initial and final state, but depends on path followed. That is called path function. How many path functions we have? Only? Two path functions. What are those? Heat and work. Heat and work. What about heat plus work? Only? That is delta U according to first law of thermodynamics heat and work are path functions but heat plus work is a state function. What about heat of reaction? Heat of reaction. Heat of reaction is it may be either delta H or delta U. At constant pressure it is called delta H. At constant volume it is called delta U. Heat of reaction is state function or path function? State function. Okay. Only work and heat are path functions and okay. state functions. State functions means change in property not depends on path followed, only depends on states, initial and final state. Whatever may be the path you follow, as long as initial and final states are same, okay, change in property also same. Other than work and heat, all the remaining are state functions. Examples are temperature, pressure, volume, Entropy, enthalpy, Gibbs free energy, Helmholtz free energy, internal energy, all these are state functions. Okay. Right. <coughs> Next one. Okay. Next, if heat, if heat is absorbed by the system. We have to indicate with which sign and if heat is absorbed by the system, Q 
we have to indicate with the positive sign. If heat is evolved by the system, we have to indicate with the negative sign. If work done by the system, we have to indicate with the W negative sign. If work done on the system, we have to indicate with the positive sign. Okay, work done by the system or we can say work done on the surroundings, by the system on the surroundings. Here work done on the system by the surroundings. Okay, W is equal to positive only. If temperature of system and surroundings, then no exchange of heat that is called thermal equilibrium. If pressure of system and surroundings are same, no expansion, no compression, no work done that is called as mechanical equilibrium. What is the formula for work done and minus P delta V where P is external pressure or opposing pressure W is equal to minus P delta V. If you do expansion against vacuum what about work done and zero expansion means opposing pressure is zero external pressure is zero work done is zero. If you are rising the temperature of a substance, then what is the expression for work done? Minus nr delta t. Okay. If you are rising the temperature of a substance from ideal gas equation PV is equal to nrt we have. So, P delta V we can write as nr delta t. If you are rising the temperature of a substance, what is the work done during that process? W is equal to minus nr delta t. Okay. So, that is what to work and work and heat both are forms of energy the units are energy units only that is joules, kilojoules, calories, kilo calories and okay. energy units only we have for work and heat. Next we discussed the concept of internal energy, internal energy is nothing but energy of the system at constant volume, enthalpy is nothing but energy of the system at constant pressure. Okay, this is energy we follow at constant volume, this is the energy of the system we follow at constant pressure. But absolute values of U are possible to determine or not possible to determine? Absolute values of U and H are not possible to determine. Only change in internal energy we can determine, change in enthalpy we can determine. What is the expression for change in internal energy? Delta U is equal to Q plus W. This is what first law, first law of thermodynamics. Delta U is equal to Q plus W. Okay. If you take isochoric process and if you take isochoric process constant volume so work done is 0. So, for isochoric process Q and delta U both are same. So, we can write QV is equal to delta U. Okay. So, the amount of heat exchanged at constant volume is called change in internal energy. Amount of heat exchanged at constant volume is called change in internal energy or it is also called as heat of reaction at constant volume, heat of reaction at constant volume. Okay, for endothermic reaction it is positive and for exothermic reaction it is negative. Similarly, what is the mathematical expression for enthalpy and H is equal to U plus PV. At constant pressure delta H we can write as delta U plus P delta V. From first law of thermodynamics we get okay, QP is equal to delta H. It is the amount of heat exchange at constant volume whereas enthalpy change is amount of heat exchange at a constant pressure. Okay, this is the amount of heat exchange at constant pressure. Again same for endothermic positive, for exothermic negative. So, absolute values of U and H are not possible to determine, but changes we can determine. Delta U we can determine and delta H we can determine experimentally. Okay. Absolute values of thermodynamic properties we cannot determine, De G we cannot determine, but delta G we can determine. But absolute values of entropy we can determine based on third law of thermodynamics. Absolute values of entropy we can determine based on third law of thermodynamics. Okay. <clears throat> Next, what is the statement of first law of thermodynamics? And energy of the universe changes or remains constant? Energy of the universe remains 
constant or energy of isolated system remains constant that is first law of thermodynamics okay uh, next one we discussed concept of heat capacity c is equal to what and what is the formula q by delta t so we can define heat capacity like this it is the amount of heat required to rise the temperature of substance by 1 degree see here delta t if you take 1 degree okay so to increase the temperature by 1 degree what is the amount of heat required that is called as heat capacity okay if you take more amount of substance more amount of heat we have to supply so heat capacity is extensive property okay it is the heat am amount of heat we have to supply to raise the temperature of substance by 1 degree what about specific heat capacity and q by m into delta t so this is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature by 1 degree for how many grams of substance only? 1 gram of substance m if you take 1 and rise in temperature if you take 1 the amount of heat we have to supply that is called a specific heat and okay q is equal to what we get it ms delta t if m is given s is given and rise in temperature is given by using this equation we can calculate amount of heat required ms delta t what is specific heat of water 1 calorie per Kelvin per gram okay specific heat of water is 1 calorie per Kelvin per gram or 4.18 joules per Kelvin per gram okay unit is what joules per Kelvin per gram here Q unit is joule SI units te temperature per Kelvin M per gram only. here what we get joules per Kelvin <coughs> as we are expressing per gram this is an intensive property okay and cb and cp and cb is nothing but here q one mole that is for what one mole and q by we get n delta t and it is the amount of heat required to write the temperature by one degree per one mole of substance at constant volume okay here n we will get here for one gram so we got m here for one mole so we get n and or at constant volume q is nothing but what and at constant volume q is nothing but delta u so delta u by n delta t so we get delta u is equal to n c v delta t for n moles delta u is equal to n c v delta t the unit is what joules per kelvin per mole si units joules per kelvin per mole that is c v n okay if you take isothermal process what about delta u and e? for isothermal process delta u is 0 delta t is 0 so delta u also 0 so for isothermal process for ideal gases we can write like this dou u by dou v at constant temperature or dou u by dou p at constant temperature is equal to 0 important and okay internal energy change in internal energy is 0 for ideal gases at constant temperature next to cp if you take then what we get and qp by n delta t this is also molar heat capacity but at constant pressure but at constant pressure we want to write the temperature of one mole of substance by one degree what is the amount of heat required that is called cp at constant pressure and so but qp is equal what delta h so therefore we get delta h is equal to what ncp delta t delta h is equal to ncp delta t same for isothermal process if you take delta t 0 delta h also 0 so same we will get a dou h by dou v at constant temperature dou h by dou p at constant temperature or 0 for ideal gases for ideal gases intermolecular forces are absent okay so dou h by dou v and dou h by dou p at constant temperature are equal to 0 that is important and right this is the concept of heat capacity sir. okay and what is the relation between cp and cv cp minus cv is equal to r so cp greater than cv or cv greater than cp and cp greater than cv okay at constant pressure whatever the heat we are supplying that is utilized in two ways one is to increase internal energy and to perform work whereas at constant volume work done is 
zero. At constant volume, work done is zero. Whatever the energy we are supplying, that is utilized to increase internal energy only. So internal energy, internal energy gets cancelled. So R can be defined like this: work done by one mole of ideal gas at constant pressure. Work done by one mole of ideal gas at constant pressure. Okay, if you take n moles and for n moles, Cp minus Cv is equal to nR. The difference is here Cp, Cv values we have to substitute for how many moles and n moles we have to substitute. Here Cp, Cv values we have to substitute for one mole. Okay, ready? If you apply this equation to one mole, we will get same. Cp minus Cv is equal to R. Okay. What is Cv value for monoatomic gas and? Based on Cp by Cv, we can decide atomicity of a given gas. Cp by Cv indicated with gamma, which is called as adiabatic index, which is also called as adiabatic index, heat capacity ratio. For monoatomic gas, what about Cv and 3 by 2 R, Cp 5 by 2 R. So gamma value 5 by 3, 5 by 3 means we get 1.66. For diatomic gas, 5 by 2 are 3 translational motions and 2 rotation, rotational motions and contribution. 5 degrees of freedom we will get. Each degree of freedom contribution is 1 by 2 are 3 translational motions to rotational motions. Cp is nothing but Cv plus R. Cp is nothing but Cv plus R. 5 by 2 R plus R that is 7 by 2 R. So we get heat capacity ratio. 1.4, 7 by 5, 1.4. And for tri or polyatomic gases, this is what? 3 translational motions, 3 rotational motions, 6 degrees of freedom. So, 6 into 1 by 2 R, we get 3 R. Cp value, we get 3 R plus R, 4 R. Gamma value, 4 by 3, that is 1.33. So, if gamma value 1.33, the given gas is said to be tri R polyatomic gas. If gamma value is 1.66, it is said to be monoatomic gas. Okay. These are Cp, Cv values for monoatomic, diatomic and polyatomic gases. <coughs> Next we discussed uh, calculation of work done by graphical method. If you have work, the system is changing from V1 to V2 against a pressure of P. If the system is changing from V1 to V2 against a pressure of P, okay, then that uh, we can calculate graphically by taking a graph of what? Pressure versus volume. We have to take a graph of pressure versus volume. Let us consider against constant pressure. This is the pressure. Against this pressure, the expansion is okay, occurring from V1 to V2. So work done during this process is nothing but what? The area below that line. The work done during that process is nothing but the area below that line. During expansion what we get? Work done positive or negative only? Negative. Work done negative. For compression we will get work done positive only. Okay, if you have a cyclic process only, pressure versus volume. If you have a cyclic process, clockwise cyclic process, okay, what about the network done only? Network done is nothing but enclosed area. Network done is nothing but enclosed area. For clockwise cyclic process, network done, we get positive or negative only? Negative only. Network is done by the system. Negative we will get. If you calculate work done each in, in each individual step, total value we will get negative. So network is done by the system only. If you take anti-clockwise cyclic process, network done is nothing but positive. That means we will get work done on the system only. Work done on the system. Okay, if you take any cyclic process only. Okay, here we are getting area of triangle, triangular rectangle. If you take a triangle only. What is the network done during this process? Network done during this process is nothing but area of triangle, half into base into height, half into base into height. That gives work done during that process only. Okay. 
always work done during a step work done during a step is nothing but the area below that line the work done during a step is nothing but area below that line only if you take here what about work done during this step only a b c if you take what about work done during step a b zero okay during a b what about volume only volume remains a constant so work done during a b is zero only okay like this we can calculate work done by graphical method okay <coughs> next one we discussed various thermodynamic processes isothermal process which remains constant and temperature remains constant so dtr delta t zero for small changes we use d for large changes we follow delta what about q not equal to zero amount of heat exchange is not equal to zero if you take expansion for expansion whatever the energy required is taken from surroundings to maintain constant temperature the energy required for expansion taken from surrounding so heat is exchanged and heat is absorbed by the system if you take compression whatever the energy released given to surroundings if it remains in the system what happens to system's temperature increases so whatever the energy released given to surroundings so heat is evolved or given to surroundings so heat is exchanged in isothermal process so q is not equal to zero okay next one adiabatic process only which remains constant only q amount of heat exchanged is zero but delta t is not equal to zero reverse we will get adiabatic process no exchange of heat between system and surroundings okay but delta t is not equal to zero for example if you take expansion okay if you take expansion whatever the energy required taken from surroundings or it uses its internal energy internal energy since no exchange of heat between system and surroundings it uses its internal energy internal energy decreases temperature decreases for adiabatic expansion what about for adiabatic compression energy released whatever the energy released given to surroundings or remains in the system remains in the system so therefore system's internal energy increases so temperature increases so for expansion gas is cooled for compression gas is heated that is adiabatic process for adiabatic process what is the relation between pressure and volume and pv power gamma is equal to constant for isothermal process p into v is equal to constant the difference is here pv power what we have one we have but here pv power what we have greater than one gamma value is what gamma value is greater than one so here pv power one is equal to constant here pv power greater than one is equal to constant and what is the relation between temperature and volume and tv power gamma minus one is equal to constant what is the relation between temperature and pressure tp power one minus gamma by gamma is equal to constant pv power gamma constant tv power gamma minus one tp power one minus gamma by gamma where gamma is nothing but heat capacity ratio cp by cv now next one isobaric process which remains constant and pressure remains constant so dp or delta p is equal to zero and isochoric process volume remains constant and finally cyclic process cyclic process means what initial and final states are same a b c d a here initial state and final state both are same cyclic process both initial and final states are same what about change in state function for cyclic process only change in state function for cyclic process zero state function depends only on initial and final states so change in state function x is state function that is zero and or we can represent like this <coughs> okay if you represent like this that is for cyclic process change in state function for cyclic process is zero next one 
next one reversible and irreversible process reversible process is possible in practical uh, or not in practice or it is not possible not possible, not possible. that is for reference purpose only ideal process only reversible process ideal process only which takes place very very slowly the difference between driving force and opposing force is very small that is called as reversible process what is the work done in isothermal reversible process only work done in isothermal reversible process that is minus nrt ln v2 by v1 in the place of v2 by v1 we can write p1 by p2 also isothermal process it follows boyle's law from boyle's law we can write v2 by v1 as p1 by p2 work done during isothermal reversible process okay and now from first law we have delta u is equal to q plus w for isothermal process delta u is zero so therefore q is nothing but what minus w just we have to change the its side r minus plus n r t ln v2 by v1 r p1 by p2 that is the amount of heat exchanged during isothermal reversible process okay <clears throat> and from past law we have we have delta u is equal to q plus w so for isothermal reversible process w we can write as minus nrt ln v2 by v1 r p1 by p2 for reversible process and this is for what reversible process reversible process is also called as equilibrium reversible process is also called as equilibrium process okay reversible process take place very slowly the difference between driving and opposing force internal and external pressure is very very small that's why it takes place slowly okay this is the expression for isothermal reversible process okay <clears throat> next one what about irreversible process and irreversible process are also said to be spontaneous process naturally occurring processes flow of water from up hills to down hills flow of heat from high temperature to low temperature flow of gas expansion of gas from high pressure to low pressure all those are naturally occurring process irreversible process or spontaneous processes okay uh, what about work done and during isothermal irreversible process and okay minus p delta v and if expansion is occurring against constant pressure if expansion is occurring against against vacuum we get zero work done during isothermal irreversible process minus p delta v against vacuum it is zero so from first law we get like this and for irreversible process delta u is equal to how q plus w so delta u is equal to q plus w you can write as minus p delta v okay if expansion is occurring against constant pressure and in such case we follow this equation if expansion is occurring against constant pressure but here in this case reversible process pressure is not constant every time pressure changes and what about the work done in reversible and irreversible process where work done in irre uh, reversible or irreversible process is more work done in reversible process is more compared to irreversible process that we can also represent graphically pressure versus volume for same expansion this is for reversible process this is for irreversible process so this is the work done during what irreversible process this is the work done during reversible process since here expansion is occurring against this pressure here expansion is occurring against this pressure so only this area we will get 
here every time the pressure decreases the pressure is not a constant pressure changes every time so work done in reversible expansion is more compared to irreversible expansion this is for reversible process this is for irreversible process so amount of heat absorbed also in isothermal reversible process is more compared to work done in uh, sorry amount of heat absorbed in isothermal irreversible process that's why both work and heat are called path functions both work and heat are called path functions what about for isothermal free expansion and for adiabatic free expansion we will get work heat delta u delta h all are equal to zero and for isothermal free expansion and for adiabatic free expansion right next one i think we have second law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics introduced a new concept what first law of thermodynamics introduced a new concept energy first law gives relation between various forms of energy like internal energy heat work enthalpy so the relation between those forms of energy is given by first law what about zero eighth law zero eighth law introduced a new concept that is temperature okay <coughs> if two systems are in thermal equilibrium with the third system separately then all the systems are said to be thermal equilibrium that is called zeroth law okay if b and c are in thermal equilibrium with a separately then all the three systems are said to be under thermal equilibrium with each other that is called zeroth law of thermodynamics introduced a new concept temperature and second law introduced a new concept entropy second law introduce a new concept entropy entropy is a measure of disorderness or randomness present in the system what about order of internal energy or enthalpy or entropy for liquids solids and gases and gases possess more entropy compared to liquids compared to solids internal energy and enthalpy also follows same order okay what is the expression for okay efficiency of heat engine and work done by heat absorbed work done by heat absorbed or we get q2 minus q1 by q2 or t2 minus t1 by t2 this is the formula for efficiency of heat engine where q2 is amount of heat absorbed or evolved and absorbed q1 is amount of heat evolved okay this is absorbed at source this is evolved at sink t2 is high temperature t1 is low temperature okay next whether efficiency depends on nature of working substance or not depends on nature of working substance not depends on nature of working substance it depends only on temperatures where it is working that is called as what carnot theorem that is called as carnot theorem it is independent of nature of working substance but depends only on temperatures where it is working okay <clears throat> working substance we use to convert heat energy to work energy to convert heat energy to working energy some substance help is required that is called working substance okay so from this we get expression for entropy change what is the expression for entropy change delta s is equal to q by t for a given amount of q and for a given amount of q delta s is inversely proportional to temperature at a given temperature delta s is directly proportional to q if you fix q delta s is inversely proportional to temperature if you fix temperature delta s is directly proportional to q and from this we can write q is equal to what t delta s and it is actually is q reverse by t every time we may not write reverse so from that we can write q is equal to t delta s so from first law we have delta u is equal to what we have q plus w so from this q may be written as 
T delta S L. Delta U we can write as T delta S plus W from first law. If you combine first and second laws of thermodynamics. Okay. Uh, one more thing, what about work done during various thermodynamic process only? Work done during various thermodynamic process. This is isobaric process, this is for isochoric process we get and for isothermal and adiabatic process we will get like this for a given volume change only. System is changing from V1 to V2. What is this isobaric process? This is choric process. This is for isothermal process and this is for adiabatic process. Okay. For isothermal process according to Boyle's law we will get uh, which type of graph only? Rectangular hyperbola, rectangular hyperbola type of graph we will get for isothermal process according to Boyle's law. Okay. According to Boyle's law pressure is inversely proportional to volume. Whereas for adiabatic process pressure is inversely proportional to V power what? Gamma. Pressure is inversely proportional to V power gamma where gamma value is greater than 1. Gamma value is greater than 1. So, here denominator is more compared to isothermal process denominator is more. So, the decrease in pressure is more. Okay. Pressure is inversely proportional to volume. Here denominator is high only. So, therefore, here we will get low pressure. So, that is why see here. Uh, this is the pressure we are getting only after expansion for isothermal process and this is the pressure we are getting for isothermal process. This is the initial pressure only. This is the change in pressure for isothermal process and this is the change in pressure for adiabatic process. So, for a given volume change the change in pressure for adiabatic process is more compared to isothermal process. This is the change in pressure for isothermal process and this is the change in pressure for adiabatic process. Change in pressure for adiabatic process is more compared to isothermal process. And what about the order of work done? And work done is nothing but area below that line or curve. Okay, where the area below that line is more and for isobaric process. So, work done in isobaric process is more compared to isothermal compared to adiabatic and compared to isochoric process. Work done in isochoric process is 0. Work done in isochoric process is 0. This is the order of work done during various thermodynamic processes. Okay. The area below this line is more compared to this line, compared to this line and here isochoric process work done is 0. <coughs> okay. We are discussing about entropy change. What is the driving force for a spontaneous process only? What is the driving force for a spontaneous process? Enthalpy or internal energy should be decrease or entropy should be positive. If entropy of the system increases, it may be spontaneous. If enthalpy or internal energy of the system decreases, it may be spontaneous only. But both have some limitations, both have some limitations. Okay, if you take at room temperature, the conversion of ice to water, at room temperature conversion of ice to water, delta H positive or negative only? Delta H positive, even though delta H positive it takes place spontaneously. Some limitations we have to this criteria. Okay, if entropy increases generally spontaneous, but it is not in all cases. For example, if you take conversion of ice to water below 0 degree centigrade, conversion of ice to water below 0 degree centigrade. Spontaneous or non-spontaneous only? Non-spontaneous. But what is delta S for that process? Positive. Even though delta S positive that is non-spontaneous below 0 degree centigrade. Okay, so therefore, ice to water whether spontaneous or non-spontaneous only, we cannot express. If it is below 0 degree centigrade, non-spontaneous. If it is above 0 degree centigrade, spontaneous. So, it depends on surroundings also. Okay. That is why the condition for spontaneity 
are irreversible process with respect to entropy is not delta s system positive that is delta s universe positive one delta s universe that is system plus surroundings delta s of system plus surroundings positive or greater than 0 important that is the condition for spontaneity with respect to entropy and <coughs> What about equilibrium and reversible process? Delta S universe is equal to 0. Delta S universe is 0 for equilibrium or reversible process. In nature, always which process occur in nature? Spontaneous process occur. In spontaneous process, what about entropy of the system? Entropy of the universe increases. In spontaneous process, entropy of the universe increases. So, entropy of the universe always tends towards maximum. Uh, entropy of the universe always tends towards maximum. That is uh, one of the statements of second law of thermodynamics. Energy of the universe remains constant, first law. Entropy of the universe tends towards maximum. That is second law of thermodynamics. Okay. Next one, what about entropy as a function of temperature and volume? What about entropy as a function of temperature and volume? NCV ln T2 by T1 plus NR ln V2 by V1 and entropy as a function of temperature and pressure plus NR ln P1 by P2. So, if you take isothermal process what happens and first term becomes 0 T1 is equal to T2 first term becomes 0. So, the condition for isothermal process what is the entropy change during isothermal process that is nr ln v2 by v1 or nr ln p1 by p2 okay and for isochoric process which term becomes zero for isochoric process this term becomes zero the expression for isochoric process is ncv ln t2 by t1 and what is the expression for isobaric process for isobaric process this term becomes zero so this is the expression for isobaric process and what is the expression for adiabatic reversible process and adiabatic reversible and adiabatic irreversible process. We know for reversible process delta S universe 0 and for irreversible process delta S universe is positive. But what about for system and surroundings and for adiabatic reversible process system 0, surroundings 0 and universe also 0. But for irreversible process, delta S system positive, surroundings 0. Overall we get positive one. Delta S system positive, this is the driving force for spontaneous process to take place in adiabatic process. No exchange of heat, no exchange of heat. Delta U or delta, no exchange of energy between system and surroundings. Even though this irreversible or spontaneous process occurring, that is due to increase in entropy of the system. For example, mixing of ideal gases under adiabatic conditions, mixing of ideal gases, what about entropy and increases. So, delta S system positive. Delta S surroundings, zero, no, ex no exchange of heat between system and surroundings. So, delta S universe we get positive. Delta S universe we get positive. So, this is the entropy change during various thermodynamic processes and and as temperature increases, as temperature increases, what about entropy and increases? As volume increases, entropy increases from these equations. As pressure increases, entropy decreases. As number of moles of substance increases, entropy increases. Since entropy is an extensive property, this is the relation between entropy with these parameters. From these equations, we will get it. Hmm. Next one, entropy change during phase transitions. Okay, if solid phase is changing to liquid phase, what is the expression for entropy change? Okay, always the entropy change means we have to follow Q by T. So, Q is the amount of heat required to convert one mole of solid to liquid that is called as enthalpy of fusion and T is the transition temperature, the temperature at which solid phase changes to liquid phase that is called 
fusion temperature delta h of by t of liquid to vapor what we have only delta h v by t b delta h v is a molar heat of vaporization that is the amount of heat required to convert one mole of liquid to vapor at a boiling point so at which temperature this phase transition takes place only at a boiling point so t is nothing but t b and what is the relation between enthalpy of sublimation fusion and vaporization enthalpy of sublimation is equal to enthalpy of fusion plus vaporization and this is delta s on mixing of ideal gases what is the formula minus r second du less than 0 with respect to enthalpy dh less than 0 with respect to entropy greater than 0 two conditions we have for entropy ds greater than 0 what about with respect to g condition for spontaneity less than 0 and a less than 0 other than entropy all the remaining are less than 0 equilibrium all are equal to 0 only all are equal to 0 but at which condition we follow you that is important and when we follow energy criteria and if entropy criteria is absent okay u and h are en energies so that we follow whenever entropy is absent and you follow we at constant volume enthalpy we call follow at constant pressure and entropy when we follow entropy if energy criteria is absent energy criteria means it may be u or h it may be u or h when we follow u and at constant volume when we follow enthalpy and at constant pressure and g we follow at constant temperature comma pressure a we follow at constant temperature comma volume okay less than or greater than corresponds to spontaneous equal sign corresponds to equilibrium process okay this is the condition for spontaneity and equilibrium <coughs> with respect to all these parameters here dg system or surroundings are universally dg system only da system only but for entropy what we have only previously delta s universe greater than 0 that is the condition for spontaneity okay this is with respect to system only and next to if you see relative signs of delta h delta s and delta g what is the effect of temperature on spontaneity if both are favorable spontaneous at all temperatures if both are not favorable non spontaneous at all temperatures for example delta h negative delta s positive both are favorable for a spontaneous process that means such process is spontaneous at all temperatures if both are not favorable only in the energy is increasing entropy is decreasing that is non spontaneous at all temperatures if is one is favoring another one is not favoring okay energy is increasing not favoring entropy is increasing favoring in such cases temperature decides right uh, it is spontaneous when it is spontaneous only high temperature if both are positive spontaneous at a high temperature non spontaneous at a low temperature spontaneous at high temperature non spontaneous at low temperature next if both are negative only one is favoring another one is not favoring both are negative that is spontaneous at a low temperature non spontaneous at a high temperature right we can verify like this and these four conditions important <coughs> both are not favorable non spontaneous at all temperatures if both are favorable spontaneous at all temperatures if one is favoring another one is not favoring temperature decides it. next the decrease in a gives what and during a process the decrease in a during a process gives what maximum work done by the 
system maximum work done by the system so a is also called as what work function a is also called as work function next the decrease in g gives what w max minus p delta v the decrease in g during a process gives maximum work other than pv work or expansion work okay maximum work other than pv work or expansion work this is called as what non expansion work another name is non pv work another name is network and another name is network so the decrease in g during a process gives what network done by the system so the decrease in g is also called as what oh, sorry g is also called as network function g is also called as network function and go 15 minutes and okay what about gibbs equations and dg is equal to pdp minus sdt for open system or closed system and this closed system da dh is equal to have tds plus vdp du is equal to tds minus pdv these are the gibbs equations we have already. for which system and closed comma equilibrium system closed comma equilibrium system but if you go to non equilibrium system in addition to these parameters they also depends on number of moles for non equilibrium or open system number of moles changes so g a u h also changes as they are extensive properties so what we get and summation i g i bar dni ai bar dni summation i h i bar dni summation i u i bar dni so the, that is the extra term we will get number of moles term that is for which system and open system so still we have to discuss some thermochemistry also okay i will continue tomorrow okay so still it may take half an hour and okay 20 minutes to half an hour it may take so i will continue tomorrow and after the completion of this we will discuss solid state chemistry and okay right this is enough for today na mon okay we are discussing thermodynamics right for quick revision for quick revision right so we discussed up to gibbs equations okay so gibbs equations we have dg is equal to vdp minus sdt da is equal to minus pdv minus sdt du is equal to tds minus pdv and dh is equal to tds plus vdp so from this g is a function of what pressure and temperature for closed comma equilibrium system similarly u s comma v h is a function of what s comma p okay this is for what closed comma equilibrium system but if you go to non equilibrium system in addition to these parameters g a u h also depends on number of moles in the case of non equilibrium or open system there is exchange of matter between system and the surroundings so number of moles changes so all these depends on number of moles also since these are extensive properties as these are extensive properties they depends on number of moles also one extra term we get summation i g i bar d n i rj bar is also called mu i chemical potential in this case we will get ai bar dni in this case we get ui bar dni 
and here we get summation i h i bar d n i. So, these are the equations for what open system or non equilibrium system ok. And some other relations are what about variation of g with pressure only? What about variation of g with pressure only at constant temperature? At constant temperature this term becomes 0. So, the variation of g with pressure is equal to what we get and v. And what about variation of g with temperature at constant pressure? At constant pressure this term becomes 0. The variation of g with temperature is what? Minus s. Yes. So, like that we get eight relations and ok. What about variation of h with s and variation of h with s is t, variation of h with p that is v at constant entropy that is equal to v. So, like that we will get eight relations and next one Maxwell relations. If you have dg is equal to v d p minus s d t very important these Gibbs equations and Maxwell relations are important ok for all competitive exams. How to give Maxwell relation possible for G and E? So, simply we follow like this and V by T minus S by P, V by T minus S by P. So, dou V by dou T, dou V by dou T at constant pressure that is equal to minus dou S by dou P at constant T and E, ok. So, various questions they are giving based on Maxwell relations are which of the following Maxwell relation is correct, which of the following Maxwell relation is not correct. They are giving some 4 5 relations, how many of them are correct ok. Next sometimes they are giving Maxwell relation, they are asking what is the corresponding Gibbs equation ok. Sometimes they are giving Gibbs equation and they are asking corresponding Maxwell relation and repeatedly they are giving questions from Maxwell relations. Okay, and like this we can give Maxwell relations for other three Gibbs equations also. For example, if you take dh is equal to T d s plus V d p, what we get and T by p V by s. So, dou T by dou p at constant s, dou V by dou s at constant p. This is the Maxwell relation possible for Gibbs equation for h ok how to verify and for example, which of the following Maxwell relation is correct like that question given or which of the following Maxwell relation is not correct ok. We have to proceed with respect to these constants and s comma p which one depends on s comma p h depends on s comma p h depends on s comma p. So, therefore, we have to verify Gibbs equation for h and we have to verify Gibbs equation for h. If constants p comma t are there we have to verify Gibbs equation for G. If constants V comma T is there, T comma V, we have to verify A, Gibbs equation for A. If A S comma V are there, we have to verify Gibbs equation for U and A, ok. This is about Gibbs equations and uh, Maxwell relations, ok. Next we discussed uh, Gibbs Helmholtz equation, ok. Here we have variation of G with the temperature at constant pressure variation of G with the temperature at constant pressure is equal to what we have? Minus S, then variation of delta G with the temperature at constant pressure we get minus delta S, ok. Variation of delta G with temperature at constant pressure is equal to minus delta S. This minus delta S if you substitute in the expression for delta G is equal delta H minus T delta S we have, ok. So, then we get Gibbs Helmholtz equation minus delta S if you substitute. So, that is plus T into dou by dou T of delta G at constant pressure. This is called as Gibbs Helmholtz equation, Gibbs Helmholtz equation, ok. Variation of G with temperature is minus S, delta G with temperature is minus delta S. This minus delta S value we substituted in the here and in this equation, minus delta S we substituted here, we got this equation. Okay, this equation gives how delta G changes with the temperature and if delta G at one temperature is known to us at another temperature we can calculate based on this equation. Okay, this equation we can write in another way also or dou by dou T of delta G by T at constant pressure is equal to 
minus delta h by t square n. This can be further simplified like this. Sir. This can be further simplified like this. Dou by dou t of delta g by t is equal to minus delta h by t square. This is called Gibbs Helmholtz equation. Previously, once a question given, in set exam, dou by dou t of delta g by t at constant p is equal to the options given delta h by t square minus delta h by t square minus delta u by t square plus delta u by t square like that options given. If you take a what we get it? If you take a at constant volume what we get minus delta u by t square. If you take a at constant volume we get minus delta u by t square. Right. So the next concept is Gibbs equations for non-equilibrium system. These are the Gibbs equations for non-equilibrium system. What is mu i? Okay, in this mu i is important or g i bar is important. Okay, now we see what is mu i or what is g i bar. g i bar or mu i. Uh, expression is what? Dou g by dou n i at constant pressure temperature n j is not equal to i. Other than n i, other number of moles we have to maintain constant. Other than n i, other number of moles we have to maintain constant. So this uh, chemical potential is nothing but change in Gibbs free energy for one mole only. If you take change in number of moles 1, if you take change in number of moles 1, then change in Gibbs free energy is called as what? Chemical potential. So change in Gibbs free energy for 1 mole is called chemical potential. As we are expressing for 1 mole, it is called intensive property or extensive property. Intensive property. This question given previously in Paul Degne lectures and which of the following is intensive property? Okay, like that question given. Chemical potential is an example for intensive property. Next chemical potential is also referred as chemical potential is also referred as what partial molar Gibbs free energy partial molar Gibbs free energy this question also given previously okay in DL exam which which of the following statements are correct in that this is given chemical potential is also referred as partial molar Gibbs free energy since that indicates the change in Gibbs free energy for one mole it is also called as partial molar Gibbs free energy and for a pure substance of one mole for a pure substance of one mole what is the relation between chemical potential and Gibbs free energy chemical potential and Gibbs free energy both are same okay this is also given previously in TSDL for a pure substance of one mole chemical potential and Gibbs free energy both are same only. for a pure substance of one mole G and mu are both same okay and what is the importance of chemical potential if you have a two phase system only if you have a two phase system phase a and phase b component i is present and component i is present in both the phases when transfer of i takes place from phase a to phase b with respect to chemical potential when transfer of i takes place from phase a to phase b spontaneously and if chemical potential in the phase A is more compared to chemical potential in the phase B, then matter transfer takes place from phase A to phase B spontaneously. Okay, right? Here matter transfer takes place from which phase to which phase? And phase A to phase B that is spontaneous. If chemical potential in the phase B is more, matter transfer takes place from phase B to phase A spontaneously phase B to phase A spontaneously. Okay. If the chemical potential in the phase B is more, matter transfer takes place from which phase to which phase only? Phase B to phase A to spontaneously. If chemical potentials are same, then that system is said to be under equilibrium. No transfer of matter from one phase to another phase. Okay. Next, previously this type of question also given in DL. Below melting point, below melting point, Solid converts to liquid or liquid converts to solid? Solid. Below melting point, liquid converts to solid. solid. Liquid converts to solid. That means whose chemical potential is more? Ready? Liquid chemical potential is more compared to solid. If you take above melting point, solid chemical potential is more. Solid converts to liquid. That means 
where the chemical potential is more from such phase matter transfer takes place. That is why chemical potential is said to be a measure of what? Andy? Escaping tendency. Chemical potential is said to be a measure of escaping tendency. Chemical potential is said to be a measure of escaping tendency. <coughs> so, here solid chemical potential is more so matter transfers or matter escapes from solid phase to liquid phase. What about at melting point and this question given in the at melting point chemical potential in the solid phase and liquid phase are same equilibrium. What about at boiling point chemical potential in the liquid phase and vapor phase are same that is also given in the. at boiling point chemical potential in the liquid phase and vapor phase are same above boiling point whose chemical potential is it? liquid converts to above melting above boiling point liquid converts to vapor ok liquid converts to vapor so liquid chemical potential is more compared to vapor below boiling point vapor converts to liquid vapor, vapor converts to liquid so therefore chemical potential of vapor is more compared to liquid ok This is the importance of chemical potential and this concept important and chemical potential concept you remember these points related to chemical potential. <coughs> Next what is the condition for material equilibrium and what is the condition for material equilibrium we have dg is equal to what and vdp minus sdt plus summation i mu i dni this is for which system and non equilibrium system this is for what equilibrium system that means for equilibrium system what about this term becomes zero for equilibrium system this term becomes zero that is the condition for material equilibrium summation i mu i dni is equal to zero if no change in the number of moles of various components present in the system that is called material equilibrium if no change in the number of moles of various components present in the system that is called material equilibrium this is the condition for material equilibrium ok summation i mu i dni becomes equal to 0. Next we discussed phase equilibrium clapeyron equation this is also important phase equilibrium clapeyron equation clapeyron equation gives relation between which parameters and pressure and temperature it gives relation between pressure and temperature ok which is useful in the construction of what this clapeyron equation is useful in the construction of what phase diagrams in phase diagrams we see the relation between pressure and temperature so clapeyron equation is useful to construct phase diagrams but clapeyron equation is useful uh, applicable to how many which type of systems only clapeyron equation is applicable to one component two phase systems only it is applicable to one component and two phase systems only for example H2O solid is in equilibrium with H2O liquid. How many components are there? Only one component but how many phases? Two phases. For such systems only this Clapeyron equation is applicable. Okay. What is the expression and Clapeyron equation? dP by dt is equal to delta S by delta V delta s by delta v delta s we can write as q by t from second law of thermodynamics or we can write like this also the amount of heat required for phase transition that may be indicated as delta h so delta h by t into delta v this question given in T H Genko chemistry exam what is the expression for dp by dt the expression for dp by dt options given like this and q by t delta v ok so this is clapeyron equation next what about clausius clapeyron equation and okay clapeyron equation is applicable to any two phases but here specially we have to take which phases and liquid vapor equilibrium clausius clapeyron equation is a special case of clapeyron equation if you apply specially clapeyron equation to liquid vapor equilibrium if you apply specially clapeyron equation to liquid vapor equilibrium then we get clausius clapeyron equation then we get clausius clapeyron equation 
what is Clausius Clapeyron equation? dP by P is equal to minus delta HB by RT square into dT. dP by P is equal to minus delta HB by RT square into dT. Minus or plus or ruined oxide, plus some put up. dP by P is equal to delta HB by RT square into dT. So, if you do the integration, we will get ln p is equal to minus delta h v by r into 1 by t plus some c integration constant. Okay. So, if you take a graph of ln p versus 1 by t, we will get a negative slope that is minus delta h v by r ln p versus 1 by t, we will get a negative slope that is minus delta h v by r. If you take liquid to vapor, delta h positive, so negative we will get, but if you take vapor to liquid, if you take vapor to liquid, endothermic or exothermic, and vapor to liquid, exothermic, delta h we get negative, so we get slope positive, okay. <coughs> Anyhow, we derived for liquid to vapor phase, delta h positive, delta h positive, so slope we get negative. Next integrated form, and if you so take integrated form, okay, in between limits, P1, P2 and the temperature limits T1, T2, then we get ln P2 by P1 is equal to delta HV by R into T2 minus T1 by T1, T2. Okay, ln P2 by P1 is equal to delta HV by R into T2 minus T1 by T1, T2. Based on this uh, equation, if P1, P2, T1, T2 data is available, we can calculate what? Delta HV, molar heat of vaporization, we can calculate. Previously given under this question. Okay. They have provided P1, P2, T1, T2 data. They have they have asked to calculate what molar heat of vaporization. Okay, this is about Clapeyron and Clausius Clapeyron equation. Next one. What is the condition for reaction equilibrium? What is the condition for reaction equilibrium? That is summation i nu i mu i is equal to zero. Summation i nu i mu i is equal to zero. Okay, when a reaction comes to equilibrium, when a reaction comes to equilibrium, a nu i is called as what? Stoichiometric coefficient. This is called as stoichiometric coefficient and we have to give it negative sign for reactants while we are writing stoichiometric coefficient. We have to give with negative sign for reactants and we have to give it positive sign for products. For example, if you have a reaction like this one, 2A plus B gives rise to 3C plus 4D. If you have a reaction like this, when this reaction comes to equilibrium, that is minus 2 mu A, okay, here we have to write what stoichiometric coefficient. For reactant, we have to give it negative sign, minus 2 mu A. Here, stoichiometric coefficient 1, no need to write, minus mu B. And for products, we have to give it positive sign, that is plus 3C, 3 mu C plus 4 mu d that is equal to 0. Okay, right. So, when this condition is satisfied then that reaction is said to be under equilibrium or chemical potentials of reactants is equal to chemical potentials of product. And if you bring these two to new, uh, right side, it becomes positive or not? Yes. So, sum of the chemical potentials of reactants is equal to sum of the chemical potentials of products. And that is the condition for reaction equilibrium. Okay. Next, what is the expression for chemical potential of component I in ideal gas mixture? The expression for chemical potential of component I in ideal gas mixture is mu I is equal to mu I naught plus RT ln Pi, where mu I naught is standard state chemical potential. Standard state chemical potential, it is the chemical potential measured at a pressure of 1 bar or 1 atmosphere. Okay, it is the chemical potential measured at a pressure of 1 bar or 1 atmosphere. If your pressure is 1 unit, this term becomes 0. This term becomes 0. The chemical potential measured is called standard state chemical potential. So, standard state chemical potential is nothing but chemical potential measured at pressure of 1 unit, unity. Okay, what about temperature and any temperature? So, chemical potential, standard state chemical potential is a function of what and temperature only. It depends on temperature only, previously this question given and standard state chemical potential depends only on temperature. We are fixing pressure at what? 
one atmosphere. Under those conditions, the measured chemical potential is called standard state chemical potential. We are fixing pressure at one atmosphere, any temperature we can take, okay. Whatever may be the temperature, if you take pressure one atmosphere, this term becomes zero, okay. Pi is the partial vapor pressure of component ion, partial vapor pressure of ith gas, partial vapor pressure of ith gas. This is the expression for chemical potential of component I in ideal gas mixture. Next one, what is the relation between delta G naught and equilibrium constant? And so for that, if you see first of all, delta G is equal to we have delta G naught plus RT ln Q, where Q is called what? Reaction quotient. Q is called as reaction quotient. If you apply this to equilibrium, what is the condition for equilibrium? Delta G becomes equal to zero. Delta G is zero, so at equilibrium, okay, delta G becomes zero and Q becomes equal to K, equilibrium constant. So delta G naught we get minus R T ln K. So this is the relation between delta G naught and equilibrium constant. Okay, what is the difference between equilibrium constant and reaction quotient? And if you have a reaction like this, A A plus B B gives rise to C C. How to give Q and C power C by a power A, B power B. How to give K? C power C by A power A, B power B. Both have same equations, but what is the difference? Andy? In the case of equilibrium constant, we have to substitute equilibrium concentrations of ABC only. Here we have to substitute concentrations of ABC at any stage of reaction. After 5 minutes or 10 minutes, at any stage, whatever the concentrations of ABC, that, that if you substitute, that is called reaction quotient. After reaching equilibrium, if you substitute, that is called K and A. Okay, K is a special case of Q. Okay, whenever equilibrium attained, whenever equilibrium attained, Q value becomes K. And a. Q value becomes K. Right. And from this, we took the expression for K. K is nothing but e power minus delta G naught by R T. K is equal to e power minus delta G naught by R T. And from this, if k value greater than 1, we get delta G naught positive or negative only? Negative. Delta G naught value negative, that means spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Spontaneous. If k value is less than 1, delta G naught, we get positive, that is non-spontaneous. And from this, delta G naught we can write as delta H naught minus T delta S naught, that is equal to minus RT ln k. So ln k we can write as minus delta h naught by r into 1 by t plus if you bring this minus r till left side and minus minus gets cancelled, t t gets cancelled, delta s naught by r. So they may give you ln k versus 1 by t data. They may give you ln k versus 1 by t data. They may ask you calculate standard enthalpy change and standard entropy change. So from this we can calculate standard enthalpy change and standard entropy change. Okay, so K depends on what and K depends only on temperature. K depends only on temperature. K is independent of pressure. K is independent of concentration of reactants. K is independent of catalyst. K depends only on temperature. Okay. Lastly, we discussed variation of K with the temperature. How K changes with the temperature? That is given by what? Van Toff equation. Okay. In set exam, uh, this question given and K is equal to e power minus delta G naught by RT. They have called this, this one as Van Toff isotherm. As K depends only on temperature, that is called as Van Toff isotherm. Van Toff isotherm. That is given in set exam. Van Toff equation. Van Toff equation gives what? Variation of equilibrium constant with the temperature. So that is d by dt of ln k is equal to delta h naught by r t square. This is Van Toff equation. If you do the integration, we get ln k2 by k1 is equal to delta h naught by r into t2 minus t1 by t1 t2. Similar expression we have already. Here P versus T, here K versus T. If K1, K2 values and T1, T2 values are known to us, what we can calculate? 
delta H naught we can calculate, standard enthalpy change we can calculate, here molar heat of vaporization we can calculate. Both the questions given and previously. <coughs> by using this equation we can calculate molar heat of vaporization, by using this equation we can calculate standard enthalpy change. From this if you take endothermic reaction, endothermic reaction delta H naught positive or negative one? Positive. Okay, right side we are getting positive that means as temperature increases equilibrium constant increases as temperature increases equilibrium constant increases for which reactions and endothermic reactions as temperature increases equilibrium constant increases okay delta H not positive for endothermic reactions so right side we are getting positive so as temperature increases equilibrium constant increases exothermic reactions as temperature increases negative we are getting here okay so as temperature increases equilibrium constant decreases this is about vant of equation and this is the syllabus mentioned okay but to we discussed some com some concepts from thermochemistry also <coughs> For example, if you have a reaction and reactants gives rise to products, how to calculate standard enthalpy change? Sum of the standard enthalpies of products minus standard enthalpies of reactants, okay. But absolute values of enthalpy possible to calculate or not possible to determine? Not possible to determine. So instead of enthalpies, what we follow only? Standard enthalpy of formation. Some by some indirect method we can calculate whatever may be the method you follow you will get same whatever may be the path you follow you will get same okay heat of reaction is a state function or path function only state function that is called Hess law heat of reaction is independent of path followed heat of reaction is independent of path followed that is called what Hess law if enthalpy of combustion data is given what we have to follow if enthalpy of combustion data is given, reactants minus products we have to follow. If bond energies are given, in such case also we have to follow reactants minus products. So to calculate enthalpy change, we have three methods. Only. Okay? If enthalpy of formation data given, products minus reactants. Combustion data given, reactants minus products. Bond energy data given, reactants minus products. <coughs> Similarly, delta G naught also. Direct to absolute values of G we cannot determine. So, standard Gibbs free energy of formation of products minus standard Gibbs free energy of formation of reactants we follow. Okay. But what about entropy change? And entropy change. Absolute values of entropy we can determine or we cannot determine. And yes, we can determine. So, therefore, but for entropy we can follow directly absolute entropy. Some. Okay, some of the absolute, some of the entropies of products minus some of the entropies of reactants. Okay, only for entropy we have such facility. Absolute entropies we can determine based on third law of thermodynamics, right? <coughs> Next, we discussed effect of temperature on heat of reaction. That is given by what? Kirchhoff equation effect of temperature on heat of reaction is given by Kirchhoff equation that is dou of delta H by dou T at constant pressure that is equal to delta Cp. If you take delta U we get here delta Cv. If you take internal energy we will get delta Cv we have to follow at constant volume. From this equation we can write like this and delta H2 minus delta H1 by T2 minus T1 is equal to delta Cp. So, heat of reaction at one temperature is known to us, heat of reaction at another temperature we can calculate. So, this is the relation between heat of reaction versus temperature. At constant volume, we replace enthalpy by internal energy. Okay. Okay. Next one, combustion means you know what is enthalpy of combustion and that is the amount of heat evolved during complete oxidation or complete combustion of one mole of compound. 
okay enthalpy of combustion we can give for how many moles of substance only for 1 mole of substance if you have if you want specific heat of combustion or that is called calorific value of a fuel for 1 gram and specific heat of combustion means okay the heat of combustion for how much substance for 1 gram of substance heat of amount of heat evolved during combustion of 1 gram of substance and that is also called as calorific value of a fuel how to get it that is heat of combustion by molar mass heat of combustion by molar mass if you do heat of combustion is for how many moles and for 1 mole this is for 1 gram to get for 1 mole what we have 1 gram what we have to do we have to divide with molar mass and specific heat of combustion or calorific value of fuel heat of combustion by molar mass next to <coughs> Okay, while we are using this equation and bond energies, if any monoatomic solids are there, monoatomic solids are there, in such case we have to take their enthalpy of sublimation. And if monoatomic solids, for example, sodium solid to sodium gas we have, is there any bonds or no bonds? And no bonds. In such case, bond energy data may not be given to you. In such case, which data may be given to you? Enthalpy of sublimation or that is also called as enthalpy of atomization and what is enthalpy of atomization and okay it is the energy required to break all the bonds present in one mole of substance and to get neutral atoms in the gaseous state okay it is the energy required to break all the bonds present in one mole of substance and to get neutral atoms in the gaseous state that is called enthalpy of atomization for example if you take ch4 we are getting one mole of carbon and four moles of hydrogens in the gaseous state. What is the amount of heat energy required for this process? That is called as enthalpy of atomization. <coughs> but if you go to diatomic molecules, and for diatomic molecules, enthalpy of atomization is nothing but what? And bond energy. Enthalpy of atomization is nothing but what? Bond energy. Both are same. In the case of diatomic molecules, enthalpy of atomization and bond energy both are same. Enthalpy of atomization is nothing but that is the energy required to break all the bonds present in one mole of compound and we have to get its neutral atoms in gaseous state. Okay. And mean bond enthalpy, when we follow mean bond enthalpy and for polyatomic molecules, for polyatomic molecules we follow mean bond enthalpy. For example, if you take CH4. Here almost the amount of heat energy required is 1665 kilojoules per mole and it is around 1665 kilojoules per mole. This is the energy required to break how many bonds and four bonds okay but the energy required to break each bond is different okay different bonds have different energies and okay. So in such case what we will give average bond energy average bond energy means 1665 by 4 okay Nadi. So when we follow average bond enthalpy and in the case of polyatomic molecules we follow average bond energy for example CH4. Okay, next uh, lattice energy and what is lattice energy? Okay, that uh, we follow for which solids and ionic solids lattice energy we follow for ionic solids it is the energy required okay it is the energy required to for the complete dissociation for the complete dissociation of one mole of ionic solid into its constituent ions in the gaseous state. In order to break one mole of ionic solid completely and to give its constituent ions in the gaseous state, whatever the amount of heat required for this process or what is the change in enthalpy during this process that is called what? Lattice enthalpy. That is called lattice enthalpy. Okay. Lastly, we discussed enthalpy of solution, enthalpy of solution. For example, we are dissolving a solid in water, we are dissolving a solid, one mole of solid in a specific amount of water, then we get okay, A plus uh, aqueous and B minus aqueous if it is ionic solid, if it is ionic solid. So what is the change in enthalpy during this process that is called as enthalpy of solution okay we are dissolving one mole of ionic solid in water 
okay then we will get okay ions okay hydrated ions and hydrated ions we are getting so the change in enthalpy during this process is called enthalpy of solution so enthalpy of solution we can calculate indirectly like this and we get a plus in the gaseous state plus b minus in the gaseous state and further hydration or solvation and so the change in enthalpy during this process is nothing but lattice enthalpy the change in enthalpy during this process is hydration enthalpy so enthalpy of solution is nothing but lattice enthalpy plus hydration enthalpy enthalpy of solution is nothing but lattice enthalpy plus hydration enthalpy <coughs> if lattice enthalpy is very very high the solubility of such ionic solids is very very low and okay if lattice enthalpy is high such solids may not soluble in water and okay lattice enthalpy we can determine by an indirect method what is that and right born haber cycle lattice enthalpy we can calculate by an indirect method that is called born haber cycle and and lastly we discussed joule thomson experiment or joule thomson expansion joule thomson expansion so when a real gas is allowed when a real gas is allowed from high pressure to low pressure then what happens to the temperature of the gas and decreases gas is cooled okay when a real gas is allowed to expand from high pressure to low pressure adiabatically and adiabatically the temperature of the gas decreases so okay that is called as joule thomson expansion okay during this process is there any change in the enthalpy or no change in the enthalpy and no change in the enthalpy so that's why this joule thomson experiment is called as an isoenthalpic process joule thomson experiment is called as an isoenthalpic process <coughs> next this joule thomson experiment is observed below a certain temperature only that some temperature is called what inversion temperature below a certain temperature only this joule thomson experiment is observed that is called inversion temperature if temperature is below inversion temperature then gas is cooled if you do this joule thomson experiment below a certain temperature then only gas is cooled that is called inversion temperature if temperature is greater than inversion temperature gas is heated if temperature is equal to inversion temperature then gas is neither heated nor cooled neither heated nor cooled okay if you do joule thomson experiment at inversion temperature then gases are neither heated nor cooled above inversion temperature gases are heated below inversion temperature gases are cooled most of the gases inversion temperature is below room temperature most of the gases inversion temperature is sorry above room temperature so therefore whenever joule thomson experiment is carried for those gases as they are at room temperature and whenever joule thomson experiment is carried for those gases at room temperature okay all those gases are cooled or not yes since their inversion temperature is above room temperature okay if the inversion temperature is above room temperature if you do joule thomson experiment at room temperature what happens gases are cooled but we have two exceptions what are those two and hydrogen and helium hydrogen and helium are exceptions their inversion temperatures are below room temperature their inversion temperatures are below inversion temperature so therefore at room temperature what happens and those gases are heated or cooled heated okay and room temperature is more compared to their inversion temperatures room temperature is more compared to their inversion temperature so therefore such gases are heated and okay what is inversion temperature for hydrogen and and helium hmm? this is minus 240 around this is minus once you check okay na once you check and inversion temperatures for hydrogen and helium Minus forty-eight. Huh? 
फोर्टी एट माइनस फोर्टी एट दिन का ओके दिन की माइनस टू फोर्टी टू ओके राइट इनवर्शन टेम्परेचर फॉर हाइड्रोजन माइनस फोर्टी एट हीरियम माइनस टू फोर्टी टू डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड ओके नेक्स्ट जोल थॉमसन कोइफिशेंट है जोल थॉमसन कोइफिशेंट दैट इज नथिंग बट चेंज इन द टेम्परेचर विथ प्रेशर एट कॉन्स्टेंट एंथालफिक एज इट इज एन ऐसो एंथालफिक प्रोसेस ओके वी आर् चेंजिंग द प्रेषर अंडी हई प्रेषर टू लो प्रेषर सो फर् गिवेन चेंज इन द प्रेषर वाट इज द चेंज इन टेमपरेचर वाट इज द चेंज इन द टेमपरेचर टेमपरेचर आफ द गैस इज डिक्रीजिंग आर नाट सो दट ईज काल एज जोल थॉमसन कोइफिशेंट इट इज एक्सटेव प्रापर्टी आर् इंटेव प्रापर्टी अंडी इंटेव प्रापर्टी फर् यूनिट प्रेषर वी आर् एक्सप्रेसिंग सो इट ईज इंटेव प्रापर्टी And if Joule Thomson coefficient is positive, then what happens? And temperature of the gas increases or decreases? It is positive only. Okay. D DP is always negative. High pressure to low pressure, negative. Negative into positive, negative. Okay. DT value negative will get. DT value negative means what only? Temperature of the gas decreases. If Joule Thomson coefficient negative only. Okay, DP value is negative, low pre high pressure to low pressure, so DP value is negative, negative into negative, positive, so DT value positive. That means temperature of the gas increases. If Joule Thomson coefficient zero, DT value becomes equal to zero, so no change in the temperature, no change in temperature. That means neither heated nor cooled. What about Joule Thomson coefficient for ideal gases? And Joule Thomson coefficient for ideal gases is Zero. Okay, if you do same experiment with ideal gases, okay, is there any change in the temperature or no change in the temperature? For ideal gases, no change in the temperature. Intermolecular forces are absent, so no expenditure of energy during expansion from high pressure to low pressure. No expenditure of energy, so therefore no change in the temperature. So if you do the same experiment with ideal gases, no change in the temperature. So Joule Thomson coefficient for ideal gases is zero. And finally, we derived, uh, we gave the expression for Joule Thomson coefficient with respect to Van der Waals constants. And 2A by RT minus B by CP. This is the expression for Joule Thomson coefficient with respect to Van der Waals constants A and B. And from this, the inversion temperature is given as 2A by BR. So inversion temperature depends on what? Van der Waals constants A and B. Van der Waals constant depends on nature of gas. And so, different gases may have different inversion temperatures. Right? This is briefly whatever thermodynamics we discussed. Okay.